Amber Smith standing by in the on deck circle. He'll be joining me momentarily. But look, we want to thank you for finding your way back to the show. As you know, Homer and I are tackling a new complex financial topic each time we get together. Today, we've got a really fun one for you. Uh, you know, it's one that um, I think can be often overlooked at times. It's one that, uh, you know, when somebody approaches you with this idea, you know, your knee jerk and gut reaction might be to say yes when you don't really understand all of the inner workings of what comes with this request. Quest. Topic of the day, should you be an executor? Let's get into it now with Homer Smith. Hey, Homer, how are you doing today? Good to see you. I'm doing well, Ryan. Appreciate uh, you coming back on. I've been uh, doing some of these where I'm the I'm the host asking the questions. So uh, right. sometimes I think it's a little bit easier to be on, uh, on your side than mine, but, uh, but enjoy it. <laughs> Well, yeah, we got to position you well here uh, on, on these episodes. But hey, look, either way, we've got a good topic for our guest today. And the best place for us to, I think, start is just looking at the situation as a whole. So for all of us, there may come a day, uh, you know, when a friend, a family member, a close colleague even asks you to be an executor on their estate, a given estate. Now, this is a task that comes with some serious responsibilities, as well as some very important risks that need to be considered along the way. You know, today we're going to be looking at what exactly it, it means to be an executor and then how you should go about ultimately deciding if this, this role and these responsibilities are right for you. So, Homer, let's start with the basics first and foremost. Tell us what an executor does. You know, what does this position mean? What does it entail? Yeah, I think it's it's a great topic because I think it's one that as people you know review their estate plans, it's it's often something they don't spend enough time thinking about, and then oftentimes don't do a good enough job asking uh, the person they want involved if they're really ready and capable and understanding of what that role entails. But in general, the role of an executor really is handling all of the administrative and legal responsibilities uh, of closing out the estate of the person who died. So administering the estate, making sure debts and taxes are paid, and then ultimately um, distributing the assets to the heirs. And, and really it's every ask, or every estate is different. You know, Some are more complex than others, so the duties are gonna be you know, more in depth than others. But, but in general, it really is you know, finding the, the will, uh, making sure that you find all of the assets associated with the estate, uh, value things correctly, make sure all debts and taxes are paid, and then ultimately that all of the assets are distributed to the heirs appropriately. Now, in some instances, Homer, obviously our conversations deal with you know those individuals that have a significant level of assets, a significant amount of wealth at their disposal. That being said, this is definitely not a job to somebody should just automatically say yes to uh, without really doing some serious thinking here, because I get that somebody might want to be helpful. They might want to, you know, lend that helping hand to a friend, family, coworker, whatever the situation may be. But there's a lot that goes in here. So walk us through why somebody shouldn't automatically just knee jerk reaction and say, yeah, I'll help you with this. Yeah, it seems odd that you would consider saying no to a close family member or a friend to, to provide this kind of important service to the family. But but there is a lot that goes into it, a lot of time, uh, even some level of legal and personal uh, risk and liability that comes with the role and that we'll get into more a little bit later. But uh, it is a big job and it is something that you shouldn't just immediately say yes to. You really got to consider what's going on in your own life and, and whether you can really handle uh, the responsibility. So no, it definitely is not something that you should simply say yes to. You should take some time, really think about what it entails uh, before making that decision. So Homer, then diving into the, the details, really, I'd love to explore some of these specific responsibilities, you know, in a little more in depth as to what the, you know, executor is looking at. So that being said, talk to us about the, you know, that first leg of the responsibilities in, you know, finding or filing the will uh, and then setting up the estate bank account. Walk us through what this looks like. Yeah, first step is is filing with the probate court and being confirmed as the administrator or personal representative for the estate, and and that really is what gives you and the grant will judge you or uh, prov uh, provide you the ability to then uh, administer the estate and and utilize uh, uh, those powers to set up bank accounts and 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 basically handle all of the affairs of the estate and and really one of those other really important steps, as simple as it may seem, is really setting up that estate bank account. It's it's where all of the funds will ultimately flow through to manage all of the debts and, and taxes and everything and, all, and ongoing expenses that as an administrator, you'll need to deal with with the estate. So you know, first step is getting filed in court and becoming the personal representative. Uh, usually the second step or, or shortly thereafter is getting that estate bank account set up. 
And Homer, I mean, in most cases, and we've talked about the you know the process of the will, the family constitution, just these these documents that are passed down from one family to a you know, member to another. This is you know the idea of the will is probably where I think the layman would get you know that would be the beginning and the end of this conversation. But walk us through what lies beyond this. You know, are there any other bigger responsibilities that are also worth considering beyond the will, beyond the bank account that you just mentioned uh, that you see as, you know, really important um, that, or, or maybe even challenging to address when it comes to this responsibility? Yeah, one of the big ones that seems simple at first, but especially if you're dealing with complex estate is really just finding all of the assets. You know, it's not necessarily just sitting on an investment account or, or a bank statement. Uh, there could be assets, you know, in safety deposit boxes. There could be in, in storage bins. It could be, you know, with other family members that you'll need to track down and collect. It could be old stock certificates that need to be converted. So really those assets could be anywhere. And then really being able to value those assets. Some of them might be antiques arts, collectibles, things that, you know, again, don't just show up on a statement with a value that as the executor or personal representative, you now have to figure out uh, what those value it, uh, values are. And, you know, you also not only have, do you have to search for assets, but you also have to search for the creditors. So the people that uh, the deceased might have owed money to and, and be able to track those down as well. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, treasure hunt uh, kind of activities that might in be entailed, especially with a more complex estate. Right, right. So any advice for, you know, an executor going through that treasure hunt of hunting for assets or, or on the flip side, I love that you also brought up the creditors. You got to look for them too. any advice when it comes to this process. Yeah, a couple simple steps you can take. The first one is simply just changing and forwarding the address uh, for the deceased to you so that you receive all of the mail. So, you know, whether it's monthly or quarterly, you'll receive bank statements, investment statements, uh, dividend uh, payments. And so you'll start to see um, as things come in that you didn't expect or didn't know about. Uh, also, it's really um, working with the CPA, the attorney, the investment advisor that they were working with. They might also have access to a lot of information on where those assets are and what those assets are. Um, so th those would be the first two. So setting up uh, the forwarding address to you and then uh, really having a, a good relationship and, and good communication with their professionals, the CPA, the attorney and investment advisor. A, a quick like caveat question that I have, Homer, is when it comes to some instances or, you know, different assets that aren't maybe as black and white, like the family car, the boat, the whatever, what, are, do you find any issues when it comes to those assets that look like, you know, life insurance benefits or policies, little things like that? Any sort of issues that people need to be on the lookout for or any tips on identifying some of those other intangible assets that might not be at the forefront of somebody's mind? Yeah, not only tracking them down, but also how they work when it comes to the estate. So there's certain assets that have to go through probate and certain types of assets that don't if they have certain beneficiary designations on them. And so understanding that is really important. So things like life insurance that typically are going to name a specific beneficiary or a retirement account or like joint and survivor assets, those automatically pass directly to uh, the beneficiaries. And so it's important to track those down and, and understand how those need to flow, and then also what assets need to go through probate and the court ultimately settles uh, where where and how those assets get distributed. Gotcha. Thanks, thanks for answering that because I, you know, I, there are assets beyond those tangible items, artifacts, however you want to phrase it. But um, so thanks for shedding some light on that. Let's flip sides away from the assets here and talk about those those debts, those liabilities that you know a given estate might have. That was another area that you mentioned, another responsibility that an executor should take on. Any tips? you know, tricks of the trade that you could recommend for anybody that uh, assumes these roles and responsibilities when it comes specifically to these taxes, these liabilities that are owed. Yeah. So, so debts and taxes need to be paid first before assets mm -hmm. are distributed. So it really is important to track down uh, those creditors and, and be able to uh, distinguish which ones are valid claims on the estate and which ones are not. Uh, just know that if you believe a claim is not valid, it, it, you may end up in court uh, battling out that creditor. But but it is important uh, with the fiduciary responsibility you have as a as an executor or personal representative to be able to identify those and 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 make sure those costs are paid. Other things like even the funeral costs, uh, probate and administrative fees, all those things um, need to be paid uh, really out of the estate account. So getting that set up um, and dealing with those uh, primary expenses are, are are really important. And then ultimately the taxes. So you have to be able to. Uh, 
determine what the estate taxes are going to be, and then ultimately file the final personal return uh, for the deceased, as well as file the estate tax return for you know as many uh, years as, as are needed to complete uh, the estate. So a lot of responsibility uh, mm-hmm. around making sure those debts are paid and, and making sure taxes are paid. Right. Now, I mean, Humber, we've covered a lot in terms of, you know, all the various responsibilities and you got to consider this, you got to consider that when it comes to the executor process. Do you often find that the, you know, the layman, the average Joe is surprised by what is, you know, what all is entailed with this process? You know, is it, is there a general misconception with individuals like this that think, ah, it's just a matter of divvying up the assets? Uh, Do you often find that's the case? Yeah, I, I, it does happen quite often. I think most people you get the ideas from the movies that it's as simple as gathering the family and reading the will, and it's kind of over at that point. But, but kind of as we mentioned, really, there's a lot that has to be done within complex estates, especially before those assets are distributed to the heirs. So it really is a lot of work and potentially a lot of time uh, that goes into tracking down all those assets, making sure creditors are paid, filing taxes all of that extra work that really a lot of people aren't counting on. So there really is a lot of work uh, that, that goes into this that a lot of people are not expecting. So we had also mentioned this at the top of the conversation, uh, this idea of responsibility that the executor comes on. And I, when I say responsibility, it's not that it's you've got to get all of these things done to properly finish this process, but more so risk, you know, personal risk that executor can take on. Should, is there a level of risk? Can you walk us through what that might be and how to avoid, you know, the the negative side of what that risk could entail? Yeah, and, and again, this is an area that a lot of people don't really think about enough. Right. I think as they're thinking about naming uh, the executor or mm-hmm. people saying yes to becoming the executor, there's a there is a lot that goes on from a legal and a fiduciary responsibility when it comes to the estate. And, and even if you're pretty financially savvy, uh, it can be like, really be surprising on really all that that becomes involved. So again, first one is personal liability exposure. So you know, if if you fail to pay the taxes on time, if you uh, fail to identify a creditor or deny a claim that was legitimate, uh, if you don't protect the value of the assets, so if you uh, fail to even something uh, that you would never really think about, but in managing the investment assets that you become responsible for, if they're highly volatile investments and and you don't look at considering selling those um, types of assets. So there's, there's a lot that goes in just from a personal liability. I think another one is really the time constraints. If, it, if it's a really complex estate, you know, this could become almost a full-time job in tracking down assets, paying bills, uh, paying taxes, and working with the beneficiaries of the estate. And then another big one is because of all those responsibilities that have to be completed before you begin distributing assets to the heirs, you can end up with a lot of frustrated and angry beneficiaries of the estate that are wondering, why am I not getting my assets more quickly? Or why are you doing something a certain way when I want you to do it another way? And so uh, depending on m- maybe it's your siblings, which could create a lot of you know family disharmony or, or if it's a you know close friends uh, that you're dealing with, if you've been named the executor, you know, a lot of stress that can come into dealing with angry beneficiaries of an estate. You know, everybody might be in harmony prior to the death, but money changes a lot of things for a lot of people. So just a lot to deal with and think about uh, when it comes to not only just the personal legal responsibilities, but just dealing with the time and the family members as well. Right. And and as we've discussed a few times on our show here is that those family dynamics can be a little sticky at times. It can be tough to navigate and, and to keep all the parties happy. The logistical mindset in me is thinking, wow, boy, should an executor, you know, be utilizing an extremely detail oriented list when going through this process, obviously making sure the assets are accounted for the, I mean, there needs to be some serious, diligent note taking throughout this whole process to, to make sure that of course you're mitigating your own personal liability risks, but also the other two risks that you mentioned, the time constraints, the time commitments, and then of course you know, making what may have once been a positive relationship with that family turn out to be a negative one because of X, Y, and Z reasons. So, you know, so thanks for shedding some light for us, Homer, on, yes, there are risks, personal risks for the, you know, the executor. It's, it's something they need to consider as part of this whole process when, when asked. So yeah. Homer, to kind of really summarize our, our conversation today, you know, if, if the average Joe or your, your coworker, your, your friend that you've known your whole life steps up to you and, and asks, you know, you, Hey, would you like to be the executor on, on my estate when the time comes, you know, what should somebody say in that moment? 
Yeah, I think, you know, take a breath and, and really think about it as the first thing, as we mentioned earlier on. But but really, um, I think many people, by the time they they get to the stage, they've already said, yes, yeah, something's already happened. And now they're they're in that position. And I think, you know, some of the advice I would give is to your point just a moment ago, you know, really being detailed, taking good notes and you know, tracking everything that you're doing uh, on behalf of the state is really important. But then, you know, another big one is, you know, make sure you're taking advantage of, of those other professionals that are surrounding that estate uh, that, you know, either you work with or the deceased worked with. So they're a financial advisor, the CPA, the attorneys, they often have a lot of knowledge about the family, the dynamics going on, um, as well as the assets that are involved. And, and really, you can take a lot of the load off with the right professional surrounding you. Uh, so that, that would be a big tip. And, and it's something that we do for our clients that are end up, end up in that situation. We try to help them as much as possible, reading through the documents with them, help them understand what's really involved and, and what are the responsibilities. And so take advantage of, of those other professionals that are out there as well. Awesome. Well, hey, Homer, look, I really appreciate your, appreciate your time, you know, jumping on with us to discuss this topic. I know it was a little bit of a different one, but, you know, then again, it is struck from the same vein of just the family dynamic, the the will, you know, the, the, the heirs and their inheritance. So we've had a few conversations with this. I like this one in particular because it dealt with an outside source, maybe somebody close to you, but it really kind of unveils, um, you know, that light behind that responsibility of being an executor. So thanks for thanks for sharing some time with us today and uh, looking forward to the next one. Thanks, Ryan. Alrighty, look, hey, we want to thank you, our audience, our fans, for, for jumping on our show today. If you enjoyed what you saw, you liked what you heard, feel free to comment, subscribe, share this information, share this knowledge with friends and family. You know, we would hate for anybody to go through this process, not understand what it means to be an executor, accept the role, accept that responsibility, and not truly be prepared. So feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Look, and for Homer Smith, I'm Ryan Ruff saying so long. Thank you so much for joining us for today's edition of Advance Your Wealth. We'll see you on the next one.